What is going on, Evan Nation? John and Pemba here with Howard Bender. Welcome into the Fantasy Alarm NFL DFS show. We are here for week 10 of the NFL season here, Howard. Now, obviously, DFS runs, you know, throughout the season. This isn't like a seasonal fantasy show. We talk about fantasy football playoffs right around the corner. And all the, no, you play DFS all the way through the Super Bowl if you want. So uh, we got week 10. We got some pretty exciting matchups. We got just a 10-game slate. Uh, with another uh, Germany game on tap uh, this Sunday, uh, how are we? How are we feeling about things here, Howard? Well, I'll tell you what. I mean, from a from a standpoint of taking the Panthers off of the you know the main slate, that's that's a bit of a bummer there for me. I mean, we'll play the showdown slate. Dan Malin's write up was top notch for the Thursday night football yeah. game, and I built the lineup you know utilizing that uh, where I ended up like four or five x in my money. Uh, on showdown so it was just it was good solid and you know whatever but you know me man i love diving into the main slate give me like yeah. the meat and potatoes of the whole thing showdown slates are like i mean i'll go to the corner bodega and buy myself a scratcher for crying right. out loud yeah play a little play a little kino uh which is uh you know, <laughs> yeah, i think you have a better that. chance of winning yeah. a kino <laughs> than you do it's probably true it's probably <laughs> taking down true. that gpp tournament yeah exactly so we got 10 games here on the slate and again some interesting matchups uh, for us to break down. Uh, I did the quarterback coach. All the coaches are out over at Fantasy Alarms. So you can make sure you check all of those out. Uh, Howard's got his contrarian corner and uh, bargains videos uh, up on the Fantasy Alarm YouTube. We'll have the playbook, the dartboard, the example lineups, uh, the whole deal deal to help you guys get ready uh, for NFL Week 10. Um, quarterback position is interesting because we have some top quarterbacks and some great matchups here. Um, Jalen Hurts is your top price guy on DraftKings, seventy eight hundred dollars. Uh, Josh Allen, seventy seven hundred dollars here, and Jaden Daniels, seventy five is your top three price quarterbacks. Um, Dallas uh, in shambles right now, both defensively and offensively. Uh, you got Jalen Hurts here coming off of another just really monster uh, fantasy performance. Uh, twenty nine fantasy points against Jacksonville, three total touchdowns the week before that. He had four total touchdowns against Cincinnati, three on the ground. Uh, and then Josh Allen has the matchup against the Colts. No Keon Coleman for him this week. Maybe not even Amari Cooper. So we'll have to watch that out. But uh, when it comes to these top three quarterbacks, I was locking in Jalen Hurts. Um, and then you mentioned that no one's really even playing Jalen Hurts this week, which makes me kind of like him a little bit more. Right. Projected ownership was sitting at less than 8%, which blew me away. But I mean, it, it's kind of understandable. I said this in the contrarian corner video is, you know, when you go up against Dallas, you just, you run on Dallas. So Saquon Barkley, who, you know, the backwards leapfrog that, that you can't not see no matter where you're looking on any kind of social media foundation, you know, like everybody's in on Saquon Barkley going up against it. All of a sudden they're like pulling back on Hertz. So his price tag is also pretty high up there, yeah. right? 9,400 on FanDuel. Um, so, I mean, you know, that's, I think that kind of scares people off, but for me, I mean, last three games, 30 carries, 126 yards, six rushing touchdowns. That's just Jalen Hurts in the last three games. So <laughs> right. come on, man. Come yep. on. It's, it's uh, you know, listen, Barkley can have his day, but as we saw, when they get down it's inside the three yard line, it is Jalen Hurts the entire way there. So uh, kind of killing some of the Barkley value if he can't score outside of it. So I, I really like Hurts uh, at $7,800. Um, just got an update now that the, the Falcons expect Drake London to suit up. So that's good news for Kirk Cousins here because we weren't sure of the status of London after he left last game, uh, hurt his hip on that touchdown reception. Uh, so at least fantasy managers didn't get completely burned by that injury. Um, now they're going up against a Saints defense that traded away Marshawn Lattimore that had susceptible def you know, pass defense as it was anyways in their secondary Cousins, $6,700, I think is great in cash games, but seven passing touchdowns over the last two weeks for Kirk Cousins here. I, I don't mind that spot for him either. I love the matchup here for Kirk Cousins. You know, when, when, when the Saints are trading away Lattimore, what are they saying to you about their secondary right now and where they are, right? The mm -hmm. Saints are two and seven, I believe. Uh, so it, it's kind of a lost cause. What's really funny is looking where Kirk Cousins is priced up there on uh on on DraftKings. He's like below Kyler Murray and Russell Wilson on FanDuel. Yeah. Like I mean it's it's unbelievable. He's right in between Flacco and Russell Wilson. I, that makes no sense to me. Even if you thought that Drake London would miss the game. That's just that's a criminally 
Philly, insane bargain. I agree with you. Um, the the pricing. Oh, we definitely see that sometimes. Like the quarterback pricing on FanDuel can be uh, a bit favorable, especially as you get to some of these mid tier guys. Um, you know, pretty consistently this year, like they would have uh, Dak priced up uh, while he was a value on DraftKings, and other guys kind of flipped. Um, Mahomes is fine if you want to go there again. He and DeAndre Hopkins obviously um, connected last week. Travis Kelsey's been great, sixty six hundred dollars for him. Uh, I like Purdy this week at sixty five against Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay's not stopping anybody. McCaffrey's back. They might have Juwan Jennings. We're not one hundred percent certain on his status, but uh, Purdy is fine. Uh, and then Sam Darnold, I think, is a spot many are going to go to because we like to pick on Jacksonville. Yeah, I mean, listen, this is a uh, this is a great matchup for him right now. Um, you know, he's not, not not the cheapest guy out there, but I mean, he's cheaper than all of these running quarterbacks. He's better, you know, a little bit better of a value. He's more expensive than Cousins on uh, on FanDuel. Yeah. He's like up there with like Mahomes and Stroud. So, you know, listen, I'm I'm in. I mean, Jacksonville ranks dead last in DVOA against the pass. They've give up like the third most passing yards per game. They've given up the most passing touchdowns. Most fantasy points per game to the quarterback position. Yeah. Like Sam Darnold is probably your lock cash game QB this week. Yeah, I would agree with you. And it helps, obviously, um, Justin Jefferson's receiver projections this week. It's like 96 and a half. So, I mean, they're just basically locking Jefferson in for 100 yards. Uh, he'd probably throw a touchdown in there as well. Uh, value quarterbacks. I, I like Aaron Rodgers this week. He's $5,700. I, I know he's been um you know beginning of his season a bit inconsistent but kind of look at the four the three of the last four games at least 17 fantasy points in there mm-hmm. um you know look good with garrett wilson got that touchdown finally with Devonte adams uh and arizona's past defense is okay they're nothing special there so for 5700 bucks i'd be willing to give aaron Rodgers a look here yeah a lot of people are looking at aaron Rodgers. i was checking his ownership percentages those are uh those are pretty big uh, right there. I might also, I, I be perfectly honest, I might give Russell Wilson a little look see. Uh, you know, in this matchup against Washington, it's really kind of funny because, you know, notice you, you and I, for the first time, I think in 10 weeks, we skipped over Jaden Daniels completely. Mm-hmm. Didn't even mention him. I mean, this is TJ Watt going after him. He'll run a little bit more, probably trying to avoid the sacks, but, you know, you're still dealing with like a really tough team defensively that's going to open things up and make it easier for Pittsburgh, right? Like you get Najee Harris who kind of, you know, does some of the running and gets everything, you know, all set up to open up play action for Russell Wilson to take some of those shots down the field. You know, I heard Mike Williams is going to be on the field and, and good to go for this one here as well, which definitely adds just another element to that. So, you know, if I'm paying down, I actually don't mind using Russell Wilson at all. Sure. Uh, and Marshawn Lattimore uh, not available this week for Washington. So oh, still, yeah, that too. Still dealing with the hammy. You have the Steelers coming off of their bye week, uh, which we always like to talk about, teams off their bye. Uh, so just an added value here for Pittsburgh. So I don't mind – definitely don't mind uh, Wilson there. Again, mentioning I, I like Aaron Rodgers. Mm-hmm. I didn't I didn't really go much else for value. Did you was there another quarterback that you had? No, any? I wasn't. No, I I'm not I'm not interested in Drake May and I'm not interested in Mac Jones yeah. or even like diving into the Cooper Rush conversation. Um I wish that Justin Herbert didn't have such a lousy matchup against Tennessee. Next 2 weeks are Justin Herbert weeks. Uh be on the lookout for that. It's a really good 2 week schedule coming up for the Chargers Ooh. here. So uh, hold hold your breath there, Howard. We're almost there. Uh, all right, breathe. We need you for the rest of the show. Uh, <laughs> running backs uh, really can't go wrong with the top guys. I, I guess the one question is how much do we expect Christian McCaffrey to play because we cannot trust Kyle Shanahan for as far as somebody could throw you and I, and well, that's not very far. So um, you know, Barkley, Kamara, CMC, Bijan's in a great spot, obviously. Uh, Taylor, Hall. I mean, you really just pick your poison here. Um, CMC is really the only question mark because we just don't know what he's going to be involved with. Yeah, and and I'm going to, you know, listen, if I'm in a season-long league, I always start McCaffrey, no right. matter what. I'll take 10. Coop and I were talking about this on the Fantasy Alarm show uh, yesterday, right? I mean, it's just I'll take 10 snaps out of McCaffrey and, and what he could potentially do with those than 30 snaps from almost any other running back out there. He's just mm. – that he delivers. And, you know, yeah, you're never going to get the right answer. So if you're a multi-lineup person, you've got to put McCaffrey into at least one 
GPP tournament lineup. You have to do it because, mm -hmm. you know, do you want to be the guy who misses out on 122 yards and a touchdown <laughs> off, of, sketches, off of 14 you know? snaps? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, like, they've been ramping him up for a while. I think just waiting for the bye week, right? Yeah. Like, he's 100% pain free. He's gone through practice. They opened the window a while ago. So, like, this could just be a full go ish. McCaffrey here you know they might limit it because it's his first actual game but it's a great matchup so use them if you if you feel confident in obviously Alvin Kamara is interesting because there's no Chris Olave now like they might throw to him 10 times in this game uh, and then Barkley you know the ace matchup there so I don't have any issues spending up on any of those guys here um, I do like James Cook at seven thousand dollars I like Aaron Jones at 67 uh, and DeAndre Swift I don't know if you know this but the Patriots can't stop the run <laughs> uh deandre swift has been really good obviously last week uh didn't really get it done on the ground but added six catches for 31 so i uh, was able to pay off some value there um i, I think this mid-tier's got a, got a lot of good options there um yeah i think the mid-tier's got a, a lot of really good options as well and just to show you how much i uh i'm with you there deandre swift actually got the write-up from me uh on my DraftKings picks for uh for the dfs watch list love it I mean, I, and, and, you know, here's a player who you hate. <laughs> exactly. I, you know, I try to explain this to, to people. I'm like, you know, the OG tight end whisperer back in the day, the reason that it got such like craziness about it was because the second week that I was picking a tight end, first week was Austin Hooper. Mm -hmm. Everyone went bonkers, right, on broken coverage. The second week I went to Eric Ebron who I hate. And I was telling yeah. everybody, don't draft him, don't draft him. And then all of a sudden I was like, this is where you play him right here. Yeah. And that's what happens. So if I hate a player that much and here I am willing to use them, Deandre Swift, for sure. I love the James cook call. I think that is uh that's rock solid um, as well. And I'll tell you what on FanDuel, I don't know where he is on. Let me look on your, uh, on, on your screen over here. Uh, James Connor, a little further down there going up against the jets. I think that's actually uh, a really nice play. Jets run diva jets are giving up like 130 133 rushing yards per game, sure. uh, giving up 11 rushing touchdowns. And I'll tell you what, like Jets coming into town, you look at the ownership of Aaron Rodgers, which is huge right now, which tells me that everybody thinks that the Jets are going to be throwing all over. And that's kind of like got Connor in a contrarian sort of way because they're like, well, he's going to end up getting game flowed out. I think that yeah. the – what Jonathan Gannon really wants to push is for a heavy dose of Connor run the football, control the tempo of this game early on. So I'm willing to use him uh, in DFS as well. I think he's very undervalued. Yeah, that's fine by me. I, I, don't, I don't mind uh, using Connor um, probably a contrarian play for sure. Um, Najee Harris had 300 yard rushing games before their buy coming mm -hmm. out of their buy. You got to think with the, yeah, we talked about this with Russell Wilson as a quarterback, you know, a bit more of a traditional offense, 21 and 19 carries. Obviously, they were ahead in both of those games. If they get a lead here, they, sh they seem pretty confident in just giving the ball to Najee Harris. Uh, so you get $6,200 for him there. Uh, value. I don't think I saw a lot of value at the running back position this week. And as I scroll down, I don't really see a lot of value. I think I, I mentioned Roshan Johnson in my initial dartboard uh, layout. Um, touchdowns have kind of been there for him. He's got four touchdowns over the last six weeks um, or five weeks rather. And again, the Patriots are not a good run defense. If they get in the red zone, you know, maybe there's a chance he vultures a touchdown, but like even at $4,600, it's not like a great value. There's, so I don't know. Was there a value running back that you liked this week? I don't really think so, but I'll tell you what, the, the, the game that I'm just going to kind of look out for and see, I know it's not a great matchup, but Who's going to be the running back for the, the Tennessee Titans? Because Tony Pollard still hasn't been back at practice. I don't know if he's been back at practice on Friday. So you might. So last week they said he probably will not practice much for the rest of the season, and okay. they're just going to prepare him for game days because he's uh, dealing with the okay. All right, because I just saw that Julius Chestnut, Morris yeah. Chestnut's little brother, is uh, you know questionable as well. So Yeah. Yeah, they said they're basically because whatever foot injury he has, they're just not going to practice him. Okay, going to get him ready for the week. So, well, I'm still, I'd still sniff around a little Tajay Spears just sure. to see. You know what, Tajay Spears being back is definitely a, a good bonus because I mean he's involved in their team, in their offense 
anyways as a pass catching back. So I, I definitely don't hate that. Yeah. Uh, they may lean a little less on uh, on Pollard there. So that's a good call. John, tell me how we can live in a world where you fade Justin Jefferson this week. Uh, you really can't. I mean, eighty-eight hundred dollars back-to-back games over a hundred. His, his reception prop is set at ninety-six and a half. I would like more touchdowns. He's only got five on the year, but like, what a piece of crap. He probably has, probably gives us two. You know, yeah. and in. I subscribe to the theory, and this is more of an NBA theory than an NFL theory, but Justin Jefferson sitting at home. He just saw Jamar Chase go for 260 yards and two scores. You don't, you don't think he has a little pride, you know, being like, you know what? Like, I can do that. You know, like, <laughs> because if you remember, there was a the little dig that Jefferson had on Chase earlier in the year around the contracts. He's oh, like, yeah, well, that's right. You're right. right? So, you know, I, I think we, you know, this may be Jefferson calling up Sam Donald. It's like, you just throw me the ball as many times as you can in this game. And I'll, I'll show everybody that I'm the number one wide receiver in football, not Jamar Chase. So I like that. I like that attitude. A little narrative play. And he's already good. So, yeah, go ahead. Knock yourself out. I didn't think A.J. Brown was going to play this week. And he's not on their official injury report going into the weekend. So um, whatever injury that caused him to miss the end of last week's game against Jacksonville and blow up a lot of lineups. Uh, he's good. He's good to go here against Dallas, and we know Dallas can't cover anybody either. Uh, so if you want to get some A.J. Brown exposure now, it's obviously very difficult to stack Hertz and Brown and build a you know, a high-priced lineup because they're two of the most expensive players at their position, uh, and there's not a lot of value at running back, as we talked about. So uh, there ain't a lot of value at tight end either, Howard. So um, spending up could be a, a bit difficult everywhere this week. Um, but Brown not on the injury report, something to at least consider. Garrett Wilson and Devontae Adams obviously both coming off big weeks uh, in good spots. I like that Pickens doesn't have to deal with Lattimore at $6,800. Um, true, true. Mid-tier, mid-tier is feeling pretty good. Mid-tier is definitely feeling pretty good. Uh, you know, I mean, listen, we've, we've kind of been been living in that in that realm for a while there to be able to do it. I'm looking at, like, the pricing on FanDuel. It's kind of funny. I'm just trying to, like – ballpark it from the guys that you're naming and i'm like all right who did who did he not name there that i can find here as like a, an even different value or better value but they're all kind of like floating yeah. in that same range right there so mm-hmm. um let's let's keep going in that and see because i'm also you know in the process of building a lineup who was the last guy that you just brought up um i mentioned pickens was the last guy that i talked pickens about was the last guy that you brought up. oh you uh, okay uh, and no Lattimore against uh, against London and uh, and Mooney. Yep. And, uh, Although I'll tell you what, man, I'll go Mooney over London. Yeah, London. Yeah, London is expected to play, but I mean, Mooney obviously is where your pivot ends up being, especially now that they're much closer in price, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. For a while, um, you know, Mooney was like a thousand dollars cheaper than Drake London. Like, I'll just keep playing Darnell Mooney. Like, why wouldn't you in tournaments? Uh, now their pricing is is similar enough that the ownership is probably going to be way less on Mooney and more on the London here. Um, So I I agree. I think that's a good pivot and you don't know, um, you know, London uh, where his like full hip health is at. Um, Can't play any Jacksonville. They're going to have McCorkle Jones as their quarterback this week here, Howard. So uh, (laughs) what'd you call him McCorkle? His name's McCorkle Jones. (laughs) Did you not know that? I didn't know his full name was McCorkle. Yeah. Yeah. McCorkle Mac Jones. So uh, they got McCorkle out there as their as their quarterback this week. No Trevor Lawrence, so uh, you, now you know why he goes by Mac, right? Um, so you got so you got that um, Brian Thomas Jr. Obviously, would be in a good spot. Minnesota's past defense has been bad, but I'm not trusting uh, that one at all. Um, Shakir could be interesting again. No Keon Coleman. Um, Mari Cooper was a surprise out last week with the injury, and now he's questionable here. We go into this matchup with Indy, where Shakir is a number one receiving option at 6K. Um, I think there'll be a lot of ownership here, um, but I also think there'd be a pretty good spot uh, to use him as well. Uh, the targets the last three weeks have been really good. 24 targets over the last three weeks. He had the 100-yard game against Seattle. So uh, clearly Shakir, if, if they're missing Amari Cooper as well, um, no key on Coleman. I think, I think that's probably a spot to go. Yeah, that's definitely going to be a spot. Although does that put us more onto Dalton Kincaid, but I guess we'll get to that one for sure. Oh, Michael Pittman officially ruled out. Yes. Really? Yep. 
Jeez, Alec, Alec Pierce week. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Get Alec Pierce. That you know what? That's actually kind of funny that you say that. That like that changes the dynamic of my expected lineup right now here. Yeah, I mean, I would love it to be uh, and I Mitchell, but I think Alec Pierce is where they're gonna where they're gonna rock that. Um, Hopkins is too cheap. I get it; he's gonna get Sertan, and people are worried about that matchup. Uh, but it's Patrick Mahomes throwing him a football, and he's fifty three hundred dollars again, coming off of a two touchdown, nine target, eight catch game. So, um, you know, you get these elite wide receivers patch married with the elite quarterbacks, and they find ways to turn back the clock on everybody, right? Like he looks like a completely different guy than he did with Will Levis throwing him a football. So um, I will certainly have Hopkins. I will not fear the Sertan um, matchup there. If you want to get Jordan Addison, uh, I think you can certainly do that as well at $5,300. Um, anybody else for you at the value range? Mm. I mean, no, Doomsday actually kind of intrigues me a little bit. Uh, just for the, the fact that, you know, I think a lot of the focus is going to be on DJ Moore and that's going to be Christian Gonzalez on DJ Moore, right? So, yeah, yeah, well, more probably a more out of the slot. I think in Dunze, if he's on the outside, we'll get Gonzalez. Does there. more run out of the slot that much? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a look right now here because I didn't, you know, want to make sure that if he is on the outside, then you're right, it'll be, it'll be Gonzalez. Yeah, he's definitely going to be on. Uh, yeah, fifty-four percent of his snaps on the outside, only twenty-four percent in the slot. Okay. okay. So seventy, yeah, seventy-five percent of his snaps are are on the outside. So he's definitely going to see it, and that just to me that just puts you know Odunze in a in a much better spot. Uh, he's playing you know thirty-seven percent of his snaps on the slot, and then forty-six percent on the other on the other side sure. of DJ Moore. So I kind of dig on the uh, on on the possibility for Odunze. I was in on him last week going up against. Uh, Arizona and he definitely popped there. So it's not chasing. It's just watching who the other coverage is going to, who the top coverage is going to be on. Yeah. I'm uh, checking out the weather here. Our, our friend over uh, Kevin Roth, uh, at least for now, now we were very early, obviously in, in the week here, uh, weather can always change. Um, sustained 50 mile an hour winds with gust 25 to 30 in Chicago, which again, it's the windy city, Howard. So it, it is the windy city. We will, we will see uh, if the wind ends up being much of a factor come Sunday. Uh, Juan Jennings. Where Juan we Jennings is interesting. His, you know, his comeback here for uh, for that. I think that's fine. I saw you highlighted Alec Pierce earlier. I did. I did. Um, again, if he, assuming he's the guy that takes those snaps for Michael Pittman, I think we have to be uh, interested in for sure. Sure, especially as, as, as the deep threat. I'm yep. not a, I'm still not a QJ guy and I'm not going to look against uh, Tennessee. So I'll, yeah, I'll pass on that. You know who I like actually, but uh, where is he? I guess he's down further for you. Where's Noah Brown? Uh, oh, yeah, oh right. there's Ricky Pearsall. I like Ricky Pearsall and I like Noah Brown. Both these guys is good pay downs. I think when you're talking about San Francisco in their matchup here against Tampa Bay, terrible, terrible uh, corners. Yeah. So you know, that's really, that's kind of the, uh, the, the question that, that you have on that. Like, you know, could, could that end up being Ricky Pierce? Like, yeah, you've got Debo and yeah, Christian McCaffrey is going to be back, but I think Pierce all makes for a nice play. And then Noah Brown. I mean, if there is a weakness in that secondary for, um, for the, the Pittsburgh Steelers, it is in the slot coverage. So mm -hmm. I think short, quick passes to Noah Brown for Jaden Daniels could be a little bit of bread and butter. So I kind of like him as well. In a uh, depressing development that I just realized, the Chargers are on Sunday night and Monday night football the next two weeks. So we can't even use them on the main slate. They're home versus the Bengals and home versus the Ravens, Howard. I was like, here we go. Licking our chops for Justin Herbert and QJ against the Bengals and Ravens. And yet we have to show down slate them. Or FanDuel, you play them on the main slate because they'll be, they'll be there. Reason to play FanDuel coming up. Um, Demario Douglas, again, I know the passing. You're not on the Patriots, but he did get nine targets. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kendrick Bourne had a good uh, week as well. I like yeah, what he Brown. he saw seven targets last week. Kendrick Bourne did. Yeah, yeah. So again, one of them's gonna get John, Jalen Johnson. Um, or uh, Jalen Johnson? Is that, am I thinking basketball here? Or is that his name? Um, 
Uh, the bear yeah, it's, it's Jalen. They, have the, they just happen yeah, to have yeah. the same name. Okay. <laughs> uh, you do an NBA DFS show. You do an NFL DFS show. Players with the same names throw you off there. Jalen yeah, Johnson, yeah. great power forward for the Atlanta Hawks, Howard, if you're looking for a basketball player to root for. Um, oh, Jalen Jones, who's out for the Bears. That's who it was, not Jalen Johnson. Yeah, Johnson's the corner there. Uh, anything else for you? Um, I don't think so i don't think there's anything that's really you know the bay wide receiver shepherd's questionable as well now yeah you know but i mean i'm sorry like i'm i'm having some trouble i don't i actually i i kind of fear what's going to happen to tampa bay this week especially when you think about the fact that kate otten is probably going to be and we can transition to our tight ends here if you want i will Um, give a quick shout to mitchell just in case because he's 35 who 3400 Adonai Mitchell. There you go. GPP tournament, little dartboard. Dartboard play. All right, tight end. So I am taking Kate Otten off the table here, and I was talking to people about this. I mean, he's got, you know, you're going up against San Francisco, who not only has Fred Warner, but they also have Devondre Campbell. So these two guys are helping out in coverage. The San Francisco has been phenomenal against the tight end. And if you take away the tight end from what Baker Mayfield, the Bucks are doing right now, where are they? You know, yeah, you could look to McMillan or Shepard or something like that, but I really kind of worry about that situation. So, you know, yeah, I, told guys might be use, out. I told people not to use Gasicki in uh, showdown lineups last night on Thursday night football. Maybe I have, maybe, maybe I know something. Maybe. Uh, you have Kittle in a great matchup against uh, Tampa yes. Bay. We saw Kelsey tear them apart. He's fifty eight hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, after that, uh, Kincaid had ten targets last week. You d- if there's no Cooper and Coleman out, I, I love Kincaid, and the price is down there. Also, I get it. You know, he hasn't been you know doing what we've wanted him to do uh, when we drafted him. But this is this is DFS, and you have to just go week to week and look at the matchups here. So I think Dalton Kincaid. Um, is definitely somebody who's uh, who's in play here. Um, I'll tell you what I you know I looked at just at uh, Jake Ferguson also. Sure. I mean I get it. It's Cooper Rush, but Cooper Rush isn't like bereft of talent. The dude played like seven games. He's just he's a backup. We know he's a backup, but it's the scheme that dictates where the targets go. Like he's looking in a particular direction specifically based off of the play that's being called. And if the scheme is dictating heavy volume for CD lamb and heavy volume for Jake Ferguson, they're really not going to change that up this week because it's Cooper rush. So and Lamb might not even play. So, and lamb might not even play. So even more possible targets. We always talk backup quarterbacks love their tight end, right? Just the simplified yeah. game up plan there. So, um, yep, I, I don't mind that. Kincaid was there. You want to go Kyle Pitts. That one works as well. Um, I don't mind Friar Muth. I, I know the target share has been down, but, um, you know, coming out of the buy, the price is fine. Like, I, I'd be willing to take a shot there. Yeah. Um, New Orleans is not going to have a backup running back again. Jamal Williams got hurt at practice today. <sighs> we, we had the Taysom Hill rushing touchdown last week. They're so depleted offensively. Yeah. Taysom Hill could very well just be a featured receiver in this offense this week with no Chris Alave and no um, Bob Means. So actually, just as we talk about, CD Lamb not on the injury report. So there we go. CD Lamb will be available. Um, To your point on Taysom Hill, yeah. uh, Coop owes me a pie bet return on that, Uh, actually. Make sure you let him know. Uh, I'll, I'll remind him. (laughs) <laughs> I'll definitely remind him. So, yeah, I'm not going to ignore the Taysom Hill. I said last week, I was like, yeah. I used Taysom Hill in DFS last week. And so, you know, there it is. But right below him uh, is Hunter Henry. And I'm a big fan of Hunter Henry this week. I mean, you know, the numbers you know the, that he's had so far over the last, the target share that he's had over the last three weeks um, has been rock solid. What I was most encouraged about, was the four red zone targets that he got last week from Drake May, who came back from his uh, from his concussion and uh, and was looking at Henry in the in the end zone. Yeah. When was the last time that Henry got into the end zone? Drake May was his quarterback in week six. Look at that. So, no touchdowns with uh, Jacoby Brissett. Hello, touchdowns with Drake May. Yeah, not many passing touchdowns with the Patriots offense this year, but Drake May uh, has helped that in this last couple of games here. So I don't mind it. Um, you know, he is definitely his his first look uh, because none of the Patriots wide receivers can generally get open. 
So, uh, you know, Hunter Henry just hanging out six yards down the middle of the field. Like yeah, it's Henry throws. and it's Kendrick Bourne. It's that's, yeah. that's how it's going to be this Very week. Much. Yep. They need more motion in that offense to get some guys open. Uh, Juwan Johnson, uh, again, two for 41 last week, but they're de- just, they're just down so many pass catchers. Um, I think you can go, uh, in that direction. And then, I don't know. And then, yeah, you don't know. So Adam Trotman against Kansas City? Would you nope, I'm not going to use that. Okay. <laughs> I didn't even put him in the watch list. I don't know. I mean, there's nothing else down there. So. There is nothing else down there. You can go Johnny Munt if you think that uh, they're still easing TJ Hawkinson in. Kansas City's so bad against tight ends. It wouldn't shock me if, like, if one of them, like, Catch the touchdown, but you can't bet on it. Uh, all right, defenses. Uh, the Bears are getting all the love. They're three K. They're home. They're facing New England. This is this is where the chalk is this week. Okay, that uh, works. They're, they're fine. You want? I mean, again, what do you? I haven't seen anything on the Patriots' offense that make you think that they're overly dangerous here. And, and may turn the ball over three times last week, so you got that. Um, the Eagles at thirty five hundred dollars. We know what they can do. Um, Where are the Rodgers. Vikings? Where are the Vikings, D, on? Uh... Right here, second highest. Okay, yeah, because the Vikings are third highest here. The On FanDuel, it's Philadelphia, Chicago, and then Minnesota. Those are your top three. Yep. Uh, the Chargers are your top priced uh, defense on DraftKings. Where oh. the Chargers on FanDuel? No love for Will Levis. Oh, well, what are you going to do? Um, I don't mind the Falcons going up against the, the depleted Saints. I think that's sure. a, a a nice play there. And then, of Will course, Levis. If you want to go against the Jaden Daniels narrative, I think the Steelers are, are perfectly fine to use them on the road here. You know, you're, you're looking for, you know, it's kind of funny. Everybody's always so focused on how many points a team can put up on a defense and they don't look enough at sacks, yeah. turnovers. Like the Steelers get it. TJ Watt being on the field is like, I mean, it's a guaranteed point or two just on sacks. Yeah. It was like the Lions at Aiden Hudson. He averaged two and a half sacks a game. Like, yeah. First- yeah, you know, right. There's three points for your defense right there. So, uh, no, I agree. I like that. And then there was, uh, was there a spend down this week? I didn't really see anything that like really turned me on. Yeah, I'm, I agree with you. I don't think there's much down here. All right. What do you got for your FanDuel lineup? Uh, Kirk Cousins under center. Okay. Let's see if we can build it on DraftKings. Let's see if we can build it on DraftKings. Uh, DeAndre Swift and Najee Harris. Swift, Harris. I mean, because running backs on FanDuel are so insanely expensive. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, you threw a little Mooney in there. Get Justin Jefferson in there, dude. I assumed you went Mooney over to London. I think you said that during the I show. I did. I did. Um, throw uh, Alec Pierce and as our third wide receiver. He's 49. Okay. Hunter Henry. Hunter Henry. I think we're, right. we're going to run out of cash here, I think. Uh oh, Hunter Henry thirty nine. Yeah, you got a. What's your defense? I got the Steelers in there, but I don't think you're gonna be able to yeah, afford thirty five hundred dollar flex play. What was your flex? Uh, I mean, I've got Ricky Pearsall in here. Yeah, Ricky Pearsall, that. Noah Brown kind of look there. In, at thirty five hundred, you're definitely look at you with um. There's your yeah. Adonai Mitchell. So we can fl- get rid of Pierce <laughs> and do Mitchell, and then throw in Noah Brown. Yeah, five. Cool. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, you don't want Noah Brown opposite the Steelers. Maybe try Ricky Pearsall. I don't know Pearsall's there. Would you do Pearsall even if Jennings is active? Yeah, because I think they. I mean, they just they play different roles, right? I think sure. that you know Jennings is definitely more of a slot guy. Pearsall is definitely built better for the outside. Okay. I mean, again, you know, this is just it's it's tough to get you know the 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 falcons you know in there with justin jefferson well, that's what it is right the jefferson being eighty eight hundred dollars is, is so expensive so uh but i like it uh yeah. cousin swift harris mooney jefferson and i mitchell henry pearsall and the steelers we might actually be able to move up off here we have 600 bucks to play with what does that get us anything Taysom hill get your comeback Dyer, Taysom hill get your, com- <laughs> your comeback with atlanta right <laughs> <laughs> but aren't you always the one who says to me, you don't have to have something coming back all the also, time? Not, oh, yes, I have always said that. And this year, the court, the winners of the Millie Maker in their correlation almost doesn't exist this year. So a lot of the Millie Makers have not had these like full correlation plays. But I do think Jason Hill is actually a higher upside play this week than Hunter Henry, obviously, given the circumstance. So you are uh, correct. 
I was hoping we were going to have Hill's like sixty three hundred on Fanduel. Yeah, he's like a he's a thousand dollars more than Hunter Henry. Yeah, I, I thought maybe we would be able to get up to Kincaid, but we're uh, we're four hundred dollars short. But Taysom Hill works for me here. So uh, Cousins, Swift, Harris, Mooney, Jefferson, and I Mitchell, Taysom Hill, Ricky Pearsall, Steelers defense. Uh, example lineup for everybody. Playbook and dartboard will be out. Uh, you can check out all of Howard's content over at Fantasy Alarm and the Fantasy Alarm YouTube channel. Hit that like, hit that subscribe, hit that share button. It helps us out immensely with the channel. Uh, as you see up in the uh, top of the left corner or right corner, I don't know which way it's showing for you guys. We got the seven-day free trial going on. Uh, Fantasyalarm.com slash win. Use promo code Let's Go. That first month after the seven-day free trial is less than $20. But again, why not try us out now for free for seven days and get access to all of our premium content, not just NFL, but NBA, NHL, MMA, huge UFC pay-per-view next Saturday. John Jones, Steve A. Miocic, heavyweight championship title belt uh, fight on the line there. So you get access to that playbook. A uh, whole lot of goodness in the seven-day free trial for this upcoming week. So get it now and get access all the way to next Saturday. So uh, check it out. Till then, everybody, good luck. Be back here on Sunday from 11 to 12 with Coop. You can listen to Bender and Coop on SiriusXM from 10 to 11. Uh, we'll catch you guys later.